Alright everybody, time for a very quick industry insight. I was not planning on making a video for today, we we're just going to have the game with some live. But, some very big news dropped yesterday that was too big to ignore, especially coming from something that I really enjoyed. So, what happened had to involve the Pinball Arcade, courtesy of Farsight Studios. Now, if you don't know what that game is, it's essentially a collection of digitizing various classic pinball tables available for you to play on the PC, uh, I think it's on, it was on Switch for a little bit of time, PS4, and so on and so forth. And the game has earned a reputation for itself due to getting classic tables that nobody else was able to get access to. Especially some of the more popular ones like Twilight Zone, Star Trek The Next Generation, Doctor Who, and more and more. And the game has been free to play on Steam for several years now. With a lot of their big attention has gone through with Kickstarters to get the licensing for major tables. Now, we've spoken about licensing when it comes to IPs in the past. And... That was a major topic and still is today when it comes to long-term support of video games. And I actually spoke to Farsight several times in the past few years regarding uh, this kind of issue when it comes to their games. So I'm pulling up the information now from their Steam posting just so I get a little bit more detail. But what is happening is that Tables from Williams which is of course one of the biggest pinball owners or one of the biggest pinball manufacturers and a lot of the tables that made up some of their most popular purchases the warranty, or I'm sorry, the license for those tables for digitizing them and selling them has ran out and what happens, and we've talked about this before is that when it comes to licensing someone else's work they're not obviously going to give you an infinite license that you will have forever and ever. Typically, it's done for a set period of time. Could be a few years, could be until the merchandise runs out. It all depends on the property and the contract in question. And what happened was, when they originally did this, and let's see if I can pull up the date the Pinball Arcade went up, 2013. So when they originally signed the deal with Williams for these tables, this was done obviously for a set period of time. And again, this would be expanded on for additional tables that would be added on, especially when you get into some of the more popular ones that have very lucrative IPs. And again, when it comes to IP ownership like this, just because you have the rights to digitize a Star Trek pinball table, that doesn't mean, of course, you can make another game featuring those characters or likeness likenesses. The IP contracts like this, or these licensing contracts, are very specific when it comes to who owns what part. With the book that I'm currently writing, they, the publisher gets publishing rights. That means when it comes to the distribution, printing, manufacturing, advertising, basically just selling the book, they have those exclusive rights, and that's what we negotiated for. And again, when it comes to any kind of IP ownership, you have to be very specific in who owns what part. So taking this back to the Pimble Arcade, the licensing agreement for those specific Williams tables, and looking at the thread on Steam, that is a total of 61 tables, including noticeable ones again like Terminator 2, Elvira, and even their free table, Tales of the Arabian Nights, and of course other tables that you may or may not have heard of. For instance, I don't know what a, a Xenon numeric display is, or a Red and Ted's Roadshow. But, again, when it comes to the licensing agreement, it's essentially an all or nothing kind of affair. They're not going to give you, you know, a maybe or a, a wishy-washy. They're going to say either yes, you do have the ownership to do this, or no. And sadly, what it's come out to be is that Williams is rescinding the license. 
Typically, again, the first negotiation is usually the hardest because this is when both sides have to prove, you know, they own what they are offering or they're going to present the deal for negotiating. And then typically when the license is up for renewal, there is usually a stipulation in the original contract saying, you know, so-and-so can request this or extend it while the other party can choose either to say yes, renegotiate, or say no. And what's happened, of course, is that they said no. And this is what we've talked about before when it came to Grand Theft Auto, Alan Wake, or even some of like the Marvel-based games. That when the license is expired and the contract holder or the license holder says no, that's it. That game is kaput, or any licensed content is gone. In a previous video, we talked about Castle of Illusion with Mickey Mouse. When the contract expired with Sega and Disney to keep selling that game, there's just nothing more you can do. In some cases, developers in the past have been able to simply adjust the game without the license holder. But when you have a game called uh, Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, that's not the case. And the same goes for the Pimple Arcade. There is no way they could sell those exact tables or an off-brand version of them. Because when it comes to licensing, again, any uh, discernible element that can be branded can be included in that license. And this can even include technology used. And that's a topic that we could talk about for another day. Now, the actual mechanism, you know, how pinball works or how the ball gets shot up and you hit flippers, you can't copyright that. But the exact table layout, any proprietary, proprietary there we go, hardware or... Uh, materials used to create that table and again the branding characters music and artwork that's all copyrightable and sadly what this means for the pinball arcade is that they're about to lose 61 of their tables with no possibility at least right now of getting them back now with that said of course for those of you watching this in the future this could maybe change in by the end of June 30th when the contract does run out maybe there'll be a renegotiation but it's not looking all that likely at this moment and sadly this is the problem when it comes to digital games and again keeping these games support for years on end when it comes to the game industry we're expecting games to last for two plus years easily when it comes to games as a service but when you're dealing with copyrightable elements they don't really work on that same mindset you may want to keep your game up and alive for years to come but the contract you've signed says that you can only use this li uh, license for two years or while the game is still selling you're kind of out of luck and what this means for these tables going forward is anybody's guess remember as license holder uh, Williams or whoever owns those specific Williams tables licenses has carte blanche to do with it whatever they want do they want to make a competing game do they want to go to a competitor again it's anybody's guess but they've made it clear that they don't want to work with Farsight anymore and when that happens sadly the consumer pays the price and with that said, we're going to wrap up today's Industry Insight here. Again, this was kind of an impromptu one. But this is definitely a sad day for Farsight Studios and the Pimble Arcade, especially when it comes to preserving these tables. And as longtime fans of Game Wisdom know, I am a huge proponent when it comes to preservation, whether it's video games or pinball or anything of that like. Because if people can't play it, then they lose out on that history. And... I am hoping that things change or an alternative comes around, but at this point, it's not looking likely. But thank you so much for watching, I guess, today's somewhat depressing industry insight. Be sure to check back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where we examine the art and science of games. Hope you enjoy me being back in my little um, office war room <laughs> for our video, and I will see you all next time. Take care. Before we get to the credits, just want to give a quick shout out to the fans and supporters over on patreon.com slash gwbicer. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. 
If you like to suggest games for me to cover or topics to talk about, let me know in the comments below. For a collection of my writings as well as weekly podcasts on design, check out game-wisdom.com. To support the Game Wisdom Patreon, you can find us on there on patreon.com slash gwbicer. A dollar will get you into our private Discord channel where we talk game topics and more. Five dollars will get you voting privileges for any major event, including the Saturday Night Grab Bag, Patreon-funded goals, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy more videos here on the Game Wisdom YouTube channel.